Welcome to our channel, Czech Grow. Hi, thank you very much for coming. Could you make a self-introduction? Yeah, well, my name is Michal Marek and I am very happy to be in the position of the director of this fantastic institute. Why fantastic? Because we established a couple years ago this institution as a result of our enthusiasm. And it's still very nice that this institute, Institute for the Global Change Research, is really based on the enthusiasm and friendship and collaboration. And I am very proud that I am in the position of the director because I know how the institute is growing up, how we are started to be important for society, how is increasing the acceptance of the institution. Nice life. <laughs> what is your scientific position? What kind of research do you do? You know, it's true that at present time I am maybe more manager than scientist. It's a pity. But I think that really I can tell you that I have 30 years of scientific work experiences. I was educated in the forestry, then I was educated in biophysics because my main professional interest is the study of photosynthesis. And I started at the Faculty of Science of the Charles University in Prague. My PhD thesis was uh, devoted to the problem of uh, mineral nutrition and relation to the photosynthesis. And then when I came to Brno, I started to slowly, slowly establish the more ecophysiological investigation of forest stand, forest trees. And we were starting with this first results, first evaluation of forestry silviculture activities and response of the trees to this. And later we were started to be interested in the problem of global change impact. It means that Main, my personal uh, scientific orientation is ecophysiology or physiological processes of mainly forest trees to the global change. You mentioned that you were studying also global change or it is a part of your research. Could you give us a short definition of global change? I think that it's very important because many, many times I am I, am, I, I, I receive some information that people are not very, very oriented in this area. It means that, according to my opinions, the, the best definition of global change is that the situation of the, of the state of a global environment in the changing world. It means that changing world is because the natural development of the planet Earth and because the effect of our civilization, status of the of, of, of our planet in the changing world. It's I think it's very simple definition of global change. Of course, it's possible to say okay, global change are some set of biophysical changes mm. and and anthropogenic impact because this anthropogenic impact is very important. It's not something new, but of course the effect of our civilization is extremely extremely high. Okay, and is there any difference between climate change and global change? I will use the, uh, the definition for mathematics. I think that the, that the climate change are the part, are some subsystem of global change. Because what means the global change? It's not only this natural processes, but this anthropogenic effect. Global trade, global transport, global movement of the people, global, global food distribution, etc. It means that really one very specific feature of this global change is really this interaction of natural processes with the effect of civilization. And it was the one very important impulse for us when we was establishing the Czech Globe Institute. We established the very important part, this department, this section of human consequences, or society consequences of the global change effect how the global change itself can affect the life of human? Many aspects. Of course, for us, the, the main manifestation of the changes is really this climate change. Everybody feel it, because we know, we know you now that something is changed. The climate system of planet Earth is changing. But what is the very second very important part, that we are really living in changing world. You know, many, many, uh, I'm not, it's not so big uh, time interval, the massive development of internet, 
massive development of techniques which, which are really making communication between people so easy. Massive transport, massive distribution of the people. I think that one example of this globalization was the situation with the, with the COVID. During a couple of weeks, everywhere. It, it means that the globalization, it's the, the, the world is so interconnected in many, many aspects. Of course, there are the very nice example of the globalization. It's probably economic, uh, economic growth, uh, possibility for the education, possibilities of the internationalization of our contact between people. But of course, on the other side, it's a lot of negative effect. Because this globalization making the distribution of production and consumption very, very big. It means the differences between different parts of the world started to be more and more significant. It means that in this way, there are some aspects of globalization which are really not suitable for the, for the future. When we're talking about global change, okay. is it a new phenomenon or was it something that was always here? in some way or another. From the point of view of natural development of the planet here, of course, always were changes. The, the volcanic activities, mm. for example, some natural disasters, etc. But when we are speaking about the current problem of global changes, it's really strongly related to the development of our civilization. We are speaking about the time interval 250 years ago, when started in, in in England, the uh, Industrial Revolution. Since this time, really we can speak about the, some increasing influence of our civilization on the environment. It means that it's, it's, it's really some little bit new phenomenon, because unfortunately the role of the man started to be extremely significant. Going back to the research part of the problem, how do you actually research global change? What kind of things do you do to understand it better? I think that really it's, it's really necessary to apply this multidisciplinary approach because it's not only the problem, very important, of course, on the level, for example, metabolic processes of the plants. It's not only the problem of the changes of landscape, uh, productivity, landscape stability, but it's the problem, for example, of the society acceptance. You know, always when I am speaking with some journalists, they are asking me what about my personal contribution. And I'm, I, I, I am answering, you know, I was applied to some special movement. It means that I'm using the bath, the full bath, each three days. Because I'm, I have really seriously effect to save the water. Do you know how many negative responses I am receiving? Oh, you are really... And secondary, when I'm speaking, that it's absolutely necessary for future that we will change our lifestyle and our uh, food composition because it's absolutely impossible to keep the planet in this style of our of our uh, consumption of organs of the of the beef etc etc. It must be changed. I am not some strict that everything must be closed just now, but little bit little bit change to be a little bit more more clever. It's not necessary for me to use everyday car. It's not necessary for me to use everyday the lunch with the, with the steak, etc., etc. It, it must be changed. Again, after this, we are receiving a lot of negative responses. It means that it's evident that our society is not fully ready. You can discover big differences between generations. Young people, it seems, it's my personal, but I think that I am right, started to be more sensitive to this, started to really be ready to apply these non-traditional approaches, etc. It means that it's really some, well, it's some conflict between generations regarding our acceptance, what we will do with global change. We have only two approaches, mitigation and adaptation. And of course, it's, it's it, both. It's a little bit expensive. Both will be some pressure of us. Why do you think that the research in global change is important? Why it's not only about changing the lifestyle, but understanding the problem better? Because we need this information. You know, I, I, I remember 
when we started with the, uh, with the studies of the effect of elevated atmospheric CO2 concentration on the production of the trees, photosynthesis. It was for us so big, we, we, we were so surprised that this response is not permanently positive. We discovered some, some negative relations and after a couple, couple of months of effect of elevated CO2, we observed the decrease of photosynthesis because the accumulation of assimilates, because the blockation of the transport, etc. etc. It means that really we need a lot of, lot of information. Nobody now, what about the society? Are really we ready to change it? Maybe that really our, our, our results will be... No, it's no way how to solve the problem. You know, this Christmas I received from my daughter a very nice gift, the book of David Attenborough. Mm -hmm. I think that everybody knows who David Attenborough is, this famous movies from the nature. And mm -hmm. he's, in this book, David mentions the history. And he tells, I was starting with these movies from the nature in the beginning of the 50s. After these 50 years, 40% of plants disappeared. 20% of animals, and I don't know, maybe that it's some, and 60% of wild landscape disappeared. It means that when you are reading this, I'm starting to be a little bit pessimistic. Are they really ready to solve the problem? Are they really ready to, to change our... Because you know the basic... What, 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 what is the basic principle of current society? It's the economical, economical rules, more, more, more. And it's maybe that it's not possible to keep it for the future. I don't know. Maybe that it will be some absolutely new technology. Now we, we know how important that it's, it's, it's uh, the availability of energy. Maybe that in the, some couple of next year, some new will be discovered in the, in the problem for energy. It's, it's only in this aspect, I may be a little bit naive, but optimistic that I believe in the man's brain, that people are able, or will be able, to develop some new technologies, etc. But still, the principal point will be our behavior, the mentality of society. No carpe diems, but to be really very okay today, 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 to keep for the future. And it's not so easy. Society is not ready to keep the ideas. What about the future? I remember my never ending uh, discussion with politics. They are all this thinking in the interval of four years when they are in the, in the position. And we are speaking about, oh, it is the situation next 30, 40 years, okay, somebody. But it's not true. We must start it to solve the problem just now. Just now. Because if not, it is very probable you know, that we will, that we will some big uh, catastrophe on whole our society. So you've been working in this field of global change research and mitigation for quite a while. Do you see any differences between how it was working in the beginning and how people react now? Of course. In each case, the number of our information is increasing. The quality of the data are increasing. But it's true that during this, my, you know, I'm in professional career 35 years. When I remember, when I'm comparing the methods, instruments 30 years ago and methods and instruments just now, it's practically impossible to compare it. It means that we have really the possibility to go deeper and deeper, deeper. We have the possibility to make really very big multidisciplinary projects. People from the, uh, which are dealing with the physics of atmosphere, with the sociologists, with, with, with the people which are really dealing with the investigation of society. And it's necessary to be in one, uh, one team, one project. It means that in, incredible increase of the quality of research, ability of the research to obtain the information, it's really evident. But it's still, we are discovering more and more complication, how the situation is complicated, how we will be able to, to maintain landscape in the good state from the point of view of water protection, from the point of view of agriculture function, from the point of view of the stability of climate, etc., etc. It's still a lot of, a lot of challenges. 
And how do you think it will evolve in the future, this kind of research? What kind of things do you expect to change? No, I think that, uh, and uh, you know, I was now two days in, uh, in uh, Banja Luka University and my colleague Marian Pavelka was presented the very nice lecture about the methods of ID covariance, about the methods of the evaluation of fluxes of mass and energy in ecosystem. And I was suddenly, uh, when I was listening to this lecture, I was thinking, yes, new time is coming, coming of application of artificial intelligence. It means that the future, I think that the research will be fully, fully automatized. And you will sit in, the, in, in your lab to really to, to, to analyze the data, to have the, some creation, but everything will be automatically. It means that, why? Because we need it. For example, now we started uh, very intensive research on the potential uh, danger of fires. Now we have the network where we have practically 100, uh, uh, 100 sensors in the in, in territory of Czech Republic. Each, each 10 minutes we are receiving the, the data about this. It means that it started application of remote sensing techniques. Really we are receiving more d detailed information to be really able. I don't know, sometimes it's, we are not able to see how it's complicated. And, and this, and really, when you are asking what, what about the future research, I fully believe in the application of artificial, artificial intelligence in this, in this area of the, of the research realization. But we need good information. We need a lot of it to be online. For example, now what is new is that in many, many aspects, we are on, online. We are receiving the absolutely current information mm -hmm. just now on, on our station. There are some situations, etc., etc. Okay, and do you think that the social sciences will be more involved, or the application of the results? Must be absolutely must be. And in, from this point of view, I am really very happy that at Czech Globe Institute that this big sociality, so, uh, so, uh, sociological research is involved. That really we have this section human consequences of global change impact because it's necessary to. Uh, Society must be ready. Society must be informed because only informed people are ready to make some responses. You know, I, I know it very well on the example of our old research station, Bili Kriš in Veskiri Mountains. This station is really perfectly equipped. It's number one. But this station is open for the visitors. Many, many people are coming. Many, many people are looking. And when they are leaving the station, you can see that, yes, the people are now equipped with information. Never, no, during this time, nobody was telling me, ah, research is some, some play of science, some, some toy for scientists. When the people are starting to receive the information, and really the informed society, I hope, is able to, to take some good, uh, good tools for mitigation, for adaptation. And do you think it is possible to stop current global change or reverse some effects of it? It will be very complicated, but probably it must be. You know, of course, uh, it, it's so critical, critical uh, impact of uh, our society, our civilization. When I am taking part on this big uh, international conference, as called Paris, and now the Glasgow. When you see, when you hear the information data, it's a little bit critical. And, but on the other side, you know, you and me, we are now sitting in a rich part of the world. But what about the rest, poor part of the world? Are they are ready for this? Absolutely no. You know, I am working in Ghana. Our institute is working in Ghana, African country. Yes, it's African country. And, and this country is full of waste. You are going on the, on the road and everywhere the plastic bags, everything. And when, when you are speaking this, okay, I, 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 I have the lecture for the students and I propagation. Okay, what about the action? Let's make Ghana cleaner. Why? Why? Because they are absolutely not informed. It means that education, information are so important. And 
And on the other side, can you image the situation? For example, I visited one part of India, Assam. It's close to Bangladesh. It's a really very poor area. And when you see the people that they have everyday problem to obtain some bottle of water, to obtain some bottle of the of the corn and etc., and to be in some little bit level of well-being. Everybody on this planet here have this this needs here, yeah. and we are increasing. Our population is increasing, mm. and this is a very important question. It will be possible for planet here to to make the service to the to this so increasing increasing amount of the people. Nobody now. Okay, but we knew about the effects of human activities and climate change for quite a while. So how come that our progress has been so slow so far? Because it's been at least 30 years, probably more, that people find you out know, about You know, I this. think that I have for you a very simple answer. Because it's politics. Unfortunately, the global change problem has a very important political dimension. And you can see the politics here in the rich world, politics in poor country. Everybody is speaking, okay, it will be, it will be, it will be. Nobody, you know, we have the politics everywhere, I think. We have, uh, we are looking, according to me, for politics with the vision. You as politics, you are responsible, not only for the current time. You are responsible for the future, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our... And unfortunately, when I am looking for the, for the world, I don't see any important politics with the vision. Then the situation is solved by, 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 some, so, so, by some movement as Greta, for example. I am a strong supporter of Greta because she is a young girl. She, is, she will live in the future. It means that it is fantastic that this girl has so big responsibility. It's absolutely different from the responsibility of the politics, you know. Do you expect any positive changes in global change field in the future? I think that at current time, I seriously believe in the changes of the energy production. Mm -hmm. Really, for example, the application of solar panels, uh, renewable energy sources. I think that now is time when this problem is coming and is solved. For example, when you go a couple of years uh, and the development of this alternative production of the energy. And in this way, I am a little bit optimistic that it will be a little bit change, that the really fossil fuel consumption will be really seriously replaced by this type of energy production. And you know what is for me one very important point of my optimism that I read in the material from Glasgow, for example, that especially financial sector started to take care about this. Bank, they are now not supporting the, the, the activities which are related with the use of coal. Mm. They are supporting the activities which are connected with the panel, solar panel. For example, uh, we have now the idea to construct one last new pavilion here. And of course, because we are the Institute of Global Change and he said, I am and my colleagues are very interested and involved that this new panel must be modern. Solar panel, the, 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 the exchange of the heat, etc. And it's really fantastic how many new materials are developed. The wall, which will be in principle solar panel, etc. It means that in this way, uh, I am optimistic. It means that really it's uh, not some big uh, fantasy that really coal will be, the fossil fuels will be replaced mainly in the production of energy. When people are talking about climate change, there are certain predictions how it will develop in the future. It's usually about temperature and other things. Could you explain a little bit how those predictions are made or what kind of information they use for it? You know, I think that uh, really in this way, I am a little bit optimistic because people are receiving more, more and more information. Unfortunately, people have the experiences with the negative effect. 
you can see this climate extremes uh, frequency is increasing. It means that personally people starting to be experienced. It means that in this way, I think that the time of the changes of this global society meaning will come. And I think that the next 10 years will be really very, very revolutionary in these changes. And very important is, and, and you was asking me about this, very important is the, the level of society information. And now we have the very big, very big uh, task before us to really Im import this information to this world of poor people, to this developing country, etc. Of course, it will be expensive, of course, but it's uh, necessary to do it. It's not possible that here we will be environmentally friendly and everything. You will be, you will use of the bicycle, you will use the, uh, the, the, the good food. When in Africa the people are absolutely poor without water, without it. It's, it's not possible. It must be everywhere, everywhere. Some effort for the for the improving this life standard, well-being of the people. As I told you, I think that really it's very positive to increase of the of this general societal knowledge. And in this way, I think that the role of uh, of uh, uh, citizen society is extremely important. The role of non-governmental non organization, role of some foundation is very important. And because, you know, we need to establish some level of our personal responsibility. You are responsible, me is responsible. Okay, I will try to, to, to make something for, for the world because uh, I have the some saying for the students. I will try to translate it in English. Please, your activities are local, but it means that you are doing something for global society. And it's, it's, it's very important because very often when I have some lecture for the public, the people are asking me, and please, what about the situation in the Czech Republic comparing? It's not situation of the Czech Republic. It's not the situation of the Europe. It's the situation of our global environment, of our planet is. We are responsible. Now we are playing on the, on the level that when we are responsible, you and me, you and me, for the planet status. When we imagine that somebody has heard about climate change and realizes that it's an important topic when where this person can find more information on it or like they really want to do something but they don't know what so could you recommend maybe something no, I, I, I really think that it's the, this level of this information level of the knowledge and the transport or transfer this knowledge to society is really increasing. It's true when I am comparing the situation five, ten years ago, it's practically in, impossible to compare. It means that in general, the level of our information, when you, when you will visit the children in the school, maybe that you will be surprised how many information the children have. But the problem is the transport to the daily life. And second problem is, again, it's a very big part of our civilization which is not informed. In, in, in the developing developing world. It means that extremely important is this education, information, to inform the people you now today. For example, now the situation in India, this was the uh, uh, extremely high, wet, uh, uh, high temperature, 46, 47, is practically impossible to nothing. It's really so dangerous, you know, and, and, and they are the poor people which are surviving it. And they have no any, any information, any power to, to, to change something. It's our responsibility, responsibility of developed world, responsibility of Europe. Because in principle, who was introducing the Industrial Revolution? We here in Europe. Who was uh, transporting this, some technologies to the China to the, to, because here it's necessary to keep the clean atmosphere? We. 
It means that in this way I don't agree with the with something. No, yeah, Europe is now now trying to be active, but the participation of Europe to the global is I know a couple of ten percent, five percent. It's not true. We are responsible because we was in, in, introducing it. It means that we as a, as European citizen have a very high level of our responsibility in this way, in this environment. If we're talking about natural world and natural ecosystems, how does global change affect this part of the planet? Unfortunately, still we have mainly data about the destroying effect of our civilization. I cannot speak about the Amazonia forest because we know it very well, how tragic it is. But everywhere, you know, for example, when you are here, sometimes when I'm moving somewhere, I see how on the agriculture soil they are constructing some new buildings some some storage for the shops etc that agriculture soil is principal for us and we are okay we will uh, construct here some airport or something it's really very very dangerous yeah. and and we are very well informed it's true that now for example very often we are invited for the meetings with the architects with the landscape plan, uh, people which are preparing the landscape plan development. Very often I, I, I take in lectures in the bank to be really informed. It means that slowly but successful I can give you some evidences about so-called greening of our society. But of course it's very slowly because it's a little bit affective your and my personal life. You know? You mentioned the negative effects of climate change on the natural environment. Do you think those effects are the same everywhere or is it worse somewhere, better in some other places? I know what do, what do you mean. That's of course it's possible to say, okay, when in North Park of the of the globe it will be warmer, it will be better for the agriculture, etc. You know it's the uh, it's, it's a very complicated because the, the system of the planet here is so interconnected. Nobody now, when the environmental weather, climate, a north part of the Siberia will change, it will be really improving. For, for, what example, what about the permafrost uh, development in the future? Big evolution of methane. It will be catastrophic. It means that it's really very complicated to, to say that, okay, if, but because it's really interconnected well. For example, the agriculture here in Europe, very well developed agriculture. But now we are, we are seeing that we have a problem. What about the ability of the current agriculture to be big storage of carbon? Yeah. And I, oh God. Our style of agriculture is effective from the point of view of the yield, but it's not very effective from the point of view to be storage for the carbon. It means, what, what, and what about the role of the agriculture? Of course, the food, but what about this, this climate role? It means that, that it's really very complicated and in principle, I am not sure that I am able to say you some positive effect of the current global changes. I still think that it's really dangerous, that it's still the source of the potential problems. I cannot tell you that, 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 that I, 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 I see some, some profit for us. Let's talk about the Green Deal a little bit. There have been many conversations about it. Some people are for it, some people are against it, some people don't understand what's going on. Could you explain a little bit what is this about? And you know, why? I think that the Green Deal is a very good example how it could be possible to solve or to be a little bit uh, uh, able to make some mitigation adaptation to global change. And as I told you, it's absolutely evident that Green Deal as the European activity is correct because the role of European civilization. We are really responsible. At the beginning, everything was here in Europe. Europe must be noblesse, must be educated, must be because we are responsible. It means that in this way, 
I absolutely don't agree with the people who are telling the Green Deal, it means some destroy. It's not true. Read it. And you will see that it's not very good ideas, which in, in the end have a potential to improve our life. But now it's not possible. It's really necessary to, 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 to be responsible for this way. And, and the Green Deal is one good example how to do it. For me, and it's not that because I am a little bit green man here. Never, it's, it's for me very good uh, uh, example how to improve, how to change, what is necessary to do. Of course, it will be expensive, but you know, every uh, the, the, the research for the cancer is expensive too, and n never you will say, please stop it. It's, 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 it's really. Yes, and if, and what is true that if we will start for up, uh, uh, to application for this later, 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 it will be more and more expensive. It means that I am absolutely big sub uh, uh, strong supporter of the Green Deal. Um, could you give some example of what is the main message of Green Deal or what are the goals that are mentioned in it? Well, I think that the, the, the main message of the Green Deal is that it's impossible to keep this style of our civilization. That it's impossible to be absolutely fossil fuel dependent society. It's not possible for the future. Because if we will keep it, it means, seriously, it means the tragedy for the future. And it's one example how to go to the improvement. Of course, the improvement will be very long term process. It will be the process with the fossil zero. It will be not the question of one, two years. It will be 10, 20 years long process. And especially this situation is so, uh, so important that the improvement, for example, on the level of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, content atmosphere, is not the problem of a couple of years. It's the problem of a couple of decades. If we will start just now seriously to reduce the, the emissions of uh, greenhouse gases emissions. It means that just now, and it's, it's very good, and I'm I in this proud that I am from Europe, and that, that Europe is trying to, to solve the problem in this way. And do you think that the Green Deal is something realistic that we can actually transfer it into real action? You know, I think, and, and you know me, that always I am saying, please don't afraid of crazy idea. Because the crazy idea very often are the really, uh, start of some very good new. It means that in many aspects you can say, oh, this green deal, it's really a crazy idea how to make the... It's not true. It's a challenge. And, and society needs some good, reasonable challenges. And for me, for you, for, for us, for the people which are a little, little bit more deeper involved in the problem, we know that it's challenged. And this uh, phrase is this, this uh, you, you know, when, when I'm hearing some politics who is speaking, that I, I'm really, I'm sorry because I'm old man, I can't do this. Please, you are really stupid, man. Really, because it's, it's, it's evident that you are absolutely not responsible for the society development, etc. Why do you think there are so many arguments about Green Deal? So because we are lazy. In principle, when you receive the information that it will be really better for you to take the bicycle, for example, and to go every day to the institute on bicycle, it's fantastic. But maybe sometimes, oh, it's better to use my car, etc. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It means, pardon. It means that really the society need to be educated and developed as the child. When, when the child, you are learning him to take the, the dress, to take the, it's the same with, with the Green Deal. And of course, it's very populistic to say, when we are stopping to use the, the coal, it means the thousands of unemployment miners. It's not true. You can go to Ostrava, where, where the situation was realized. Ostrava is not a poor city. You cannot see some uh, 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 for miners which are on the street without... It's not true. They adapted. 
lot of miners now working in the different, for example, in, 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 in the services, etc., etc. It means that that is only the, the question of go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And while fighting against global change, we're trying to somehow fix it. What can we do as individuals, like as one person? Do now, I think that in this way, we as the people which are living in formal communist systems are not so ready as the people from other parts of Europe. Why? Because during this communist system, a, a lot of things was practically impossible to obtain. It means that now when everything is open, the, the gener we are angry. Oh, go to, to buy this, to that. and especially this older generation. Yeah, it means that every limitation. It's oh, what you are doing? I can't to spend. I can't to buy the new car. Is three years. I can be on the holiday each year in some in tropical areas to to fly uh, across the whole planet, etc. In principle, it's okay, you are, you, are, you, are, you are trying to have a very nice level of your life. But on the other side, to keep this nice level of your life, it means that you must be responsible. And in this way, I think that still I feel some differences between so-called East and West. And what do you do yourself to try to be more supportive? And I have... <laughs> Two, uh, sorry, stupid example for this. For example, the first one is that in my family, it's absolutely prohibited to eat tuna, this fish, because it's so extremely explo explorated from the sun that my family approach is stop it. I know you can, see. but it's you know it's, it's it's this approach. Everybody will start with something small, and in in. in in general, it's the global action. And second is that I personally established the movement of the water saving. It means that I am, you know, I of course I am basing to make into the basic hygiene each, each day. But in principle, I am really limited my personal consumption of water. And I think that it's very important. If everybody will think about this, that water in the future will be really and when you're talking to other people about climate change, do you see any differences how it was, let's say, 20 years ago and now? Exactly, are they more exactly. In general, the level of information, because people are informed. You, 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 you can see in media, in the, it's, it's, it's really increasing. You know? Because, you know, it's, it's a general trend of our society. Could you imagine you are a young girl, but 20, 30, 40 years ago, computers. Nobody know it. And now everybody, everybody is using the, this, the smartphone, etc., etc. It means that in general, the level of education of society is increased, and the same is on the level of information about the global changes. In this way, I am a little bit optimistic. And what do you think we can do, not as individuals, but as a whole society, to do better regarding climate change? I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's mainly strongly dependent of our ability to accept that we are here, that we are responsible, we are not the end user of the planet, but we are the farm. We are, we are, our responsibility is to be uh, cultivated, to cultivate the, the, our life. And it means, you know, I think that in this way it's really uh, very important change which must be done that everybody will feel that is responsible for the planet is. You know, I, 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 my favorite book from my innocence time is the book Small Duke. And in this book he is speaking with, with and they will say, do you know, what about the relation of your planet? Please keep in your mind. It each morning, the first take care about you and they care about your planet. And I think that it's in, in these two sentences is everything. Take care about you and your planet. Because if you will be okay, planet will be okay. If planet will be okay, you will be okay. And I, I still believe 
that we as our society, as, as the civilization, have the power to do it. Of course, it will be maybe a little bit long term process, but I believe that it will be, because we have no alternative. We have really no alternative. Could you recommend any books or websites where we can find something interesting or more information about this topic? As I told you that I am now very impressed from this book of David Attenborough. It's really fantastic, fantastic description and fantastic ideas. It's a lot of, uh, lot of books, a, lo a, lo a lot of uh, media, uh, media programs about it. It means that I cannot to tell you this book is the best. It's a lot of information. Please, on the internet, on the, it's, it's really possible to, to obtain a lot, lot of information. And you know, what, what is very important, please take time during your weekend and go out of city to see the nature, to see the birds, to hear the birds, to see the flowers. I see that it's a very good book for you. And you will see how the system is complicated, how is the system is interconnected, and what about your role about this. It's, it's very nice thinking about it. For example, you know, my personal hobby is ornithology. And unfortunately, this year, I really, objectively, must say, it's significant decrease of number of the birds. Why not? Because there are significant negative changes in the amount of insects in the, in, in, in the nature. And you ask the, oh God, Cyber, maybe that next year it will be better, but, but still, this it's to observe the nature, to observe society, or vice versa, you go to the shopping center and you will see. You know, it's, 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 I think these are perfect books for you, perfect information, perfect source of uh, what about, what about. Uh, I, you know, I, I know, that I cannot believe that everybody will be poor nature people, uh, men, and to, to take, protect, and shopping is, it's, it's, it's society, is mosaic, you know? But still, I think that to sometimes to make this, it's very, 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 very important because sometimes you can see, oh God, it's not possible that the people are not thinking. But on, on the other side, I am so happy when I see this nice example how the people are trying to be friendly to the environment, to him responsibility for the future, etc. But still, I am optimistic. I believe, I am believing in our, in our civilization that we will be friendly and that we will be able to solve. Because it's, you know, war is an incredible bad thing. But I think that the global changes are really, extremely important phenomenon over everything. You mentioned that sometimes you get really frustrated when think people doing stupid things. And it's, it's a general feeling, I think, because nowadays when we read the articles and see all oh, the situation is getting worse and worse, and it's very depressing. So what do you think we can do to stay strong and keep up with the goals? And no, I, 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 I absolutely agree with you, but maybe that one possible solution is to really uh, your self-responsibility, your self-leaning, uh, uh, how you are acting. Because now you are only you, Daria. Maybe that next week there will be five years which are uh, thinking and doing as you, and over next year it will be whole city. Over the, it's, in this way, we, we, we must be Optimistic, of course, and it's very important new role of the so-called celebrities. For example, when, when I remember this famous actor <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio, how important is your 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 your, uh, your action that he's saying, please keep a green mind. The same on the level of Czech Republic, for example, Andrei Vetchiato. These people are very very important because our society is really sending you. Know, uh -huh. No, no, no. It means that responsibility of the people, responsibility of scientists, responsibility of the politician. And unfortunately, it's, it's a very weak point. 